Hey, what's up everybody? It's Martin Miller here and today I'm excited to bring you five killer licks from my Salts of Swing cover. I hope you're all doing well. Just want to let you guys know I'm doing really, really well. I've just moved places as you may have noticed or not noticed. It looks very similar, but uh, it's not the greatest idea during lockdown. Don't do that. Um, but the good news is the studio is back in action. I'm back to making videos at home, which is awesome. And most importantly, I've recently ran a poll on YouTube asking you guys which solo you wanted me to break down from my cover repertoire. And you guys voted for Sultans of Swing. So that's what's happening today. Five Killer Licks on Sultans of Swing. So this episode of Five Killer Licks is sponsored by my friends over at Seymour Duncan. I've been using their pickups exclusively for the past three or four years or so. I'm super, super happy with them. As you know, this guitar, my signature guitar, the MM7, as well as the MM1s, which you can see in the background, they're all loaded with Seymour Duncan Hyperions, which are only available in these instruments and the Ibanez AZ line. I also recently got a set of Seymour Duncan Custom 5s for my RGD that I've been playing in the 80s medley, the gold-plated pickups. They're awesome. And of course, I've been using the Seymour Duncan pickups in all my Talmans, such as in the little wing cover. Those are customs as well that are specifically made for the Talman series. So if you're in the market for a replacement pickup, Go to their website, check out their pickups. I'm browsing that site all the time and dreaming up dream combos of guitars and pickups that I could combine. So check them out. Seymour Duncan. Thanks, guys. In other news, my solo album is nearing completion. I've been saying this for a while, but it's actually true. I'm just in the process of recording a few more vocals. That's been going really well. Writing lyrics for the first time. That has been quite the experience. And, and I'm basically just waiting for lockdown here to end so I can get my band together for a video shoot for the lead single. And I'm sure some of you are gonna like what I have to say next because a lot of you have been asking and asking for this. I am gonna start working on a new JTC masterclass very, very soon. I got a ton of time allocated just for that. I'm currently kind of gauging what topic I could be covering. I wanna ask you guys, what do you want this JTC masterclass to be about? Do you think you want something technique related? Do you want another improv masterclass? Do you want something on, God knows, constructing solos? Whatever it is, write it down in the comments and let me know. And of course, I'll never forget about the Martin Miller Session Band. Luckily, we have enough video footage recorded to sustain us through lockdown. We get videos coming with Kirk Fletcher and Mark Lettieri on a monthly basis. There is a tab available for this lesson containing all of the licks. That tab is of course free. You can find it by following the link in the description to my website and download it there. There's a little pay what you want system built in. So if you wanna leave a little extra tip, you can do so there. Other than that, you can find the complete solo on Patreon as well as a dozen others in the Silver Plus tier. Now for the five licks I've chosen from the solo, I've kind of ordered them going from easy to hard, although they are all kind of in the same ballpark as far as difficulty goes. Um, I won't always be explaining each and every note exactly as it is. The tab is there for you to refer to. Um, I'll be mostly talking about the overarching idea and demonstrating how I actually play it. Also, here's a little pet peeve of mine. I will be mostly referring to the notes as interval functions in relationship to the underlying chords, not so much as note names or fret numbers. That's just how I think about music in general or how I think about composing solos or improvising solos. I think how does my current note relate to the underlying harmony? So that's how I'm going to explain it. However, don't be scared if you cannot follow that. There's the free tab, has all the notes in it and you can refer to that if you're in doubt. But now we're going to check out lick one. Lick one starts out relatively simple as far as the technical execution is concerned. It's mostly a melody that is just phrased with kind of a few quirks here and there. I'm going to explain all of these to you. Do not worry. We're starting off with a couple of double stops. Those are played over an F major chord. And I'm picking out the root and the third on the G and B string. Like this with my first finger barred on the 10th fret. And then I'm moving both these notes through the scale diatonically. So I'm moving the root up to the second and third, and I'm moving the third up to the fourth and fifth at the same time. That gives you this. It's a little slide there as well. To make it sound a little nicer. Then I go into this kind of Petrucci-esque pedal tone lick here on the 13th fret. And I bend up to the major third. 
Then the chord switches to C major and I play this phrase that starts with this little chromatic embellishment. And goes through a couple of octaves. The trick here, once you get your head around it, is actually pretty simple. I have a two string phrase. I have the third, fourth, fifth of C major on the high E string and the root on the B string. And I take that exact pattern down three frets and play it on the G and D string. Exact same fingering and that gives you the same notes an octave lower and then I do the same thing two frets lower and on the A and E string. Gives you this. I play that uh, consecutively. And I do a little variation on the lowest string, something like this. That is not it. Let me try that again. I think that is it. Now, these memories of these licks are kind of vague. It's been a long time ago and they were mostly off the cuff. So it's kind of hard for me to even get back into it. So um, let me try the whole phrase slowly. Huh? That's it with most of the nuances. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of fireworks going on in this lick. What really sells it is the nuance and the depth of the execution, you know, with all the little embellishments and the little inflections that you use. Lake One is kind of a nice study for that. Make sure you get those details right when you, when you check it out. Lake number two is divided into two different sections, really. The first section is played over a C major chord, and it's really just a three note per string scale, completely diatonic except for one little twist. Let me play it for you slowly. So I'm gonna count in here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, you may notice there is a little twist on the top string here. I incorporate an extra note. I kind of cram an extra note in there. The reason for that is resolution. The downbeat of the next bar um, is a D minor chord and I wanna hit the minor third of that chord on the downbeat, right? I want to build up all this tension by playing a fast picking run. And I want to have that satisfactory resolution on the downbeat by landing exactly on the third. And I can only accomplish this if I cram this extra note on the top string in there. And the cool thing is, is a chromatic passing tone. It adds some harmonic flavor, but it also makes sure you hit the resolution right. And then the second part is this D minor phrase. I'm gonna play that for you slowly. Once again, a melodic phrase, but a few interesting embellishments to it. For example, we have this half stone bend from the second to the minor third of the chord. And pick that again, release. Another one of those bendings. Another chromatic passing tone in here. A bend with a little kind of Eastern inflection in there. And then there's a very Steve Vai thing where I pick a note and then I bend into the note from below right after. Gives it a very kind of vocal sound, if you will. I always try to incorporate some of these things. So I don't just play notes like a, like a MIDI guitar or something. I always wanna bring these licks to life. And that concludes lick number two. All right, lick number three, I actually had to study <laughs> to get it back into my fingers. It's quite an odd one. Um, it's uh, played over an A7 chord, an altered A7 chord. Don't worry if you don't know what that is. There's a time to figure that out. You can just learn the notes and play it as is. Um, the biggest challenge you're gonna face at first is to find the start off point for this lick. It doesn't start on a downbeat. It starts on the second 16th note of the third beat. And that is kind of challenging. So you're gonna have to count one, two, one, da, 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 da. Yeah, that'll be the first challenge you're gonna have to nail. I'm gonna do this very slowly here. So I'm gonna count myself in. One, two, three. And I'm gonna do that a little faster. One, two, three. I tend to use my middle finger a lot with these intervallic kind of licks, like here on the D string and on the G string. 
makes the jumps a little bit easier. And the second part of this thing is basically just a bebop altered line. If you don't know what altered is and melodic minor modes and all that kind of stuff, do not worry about it. Just learn the notes and play the lick as is. But for those who know, you'll find we have the root, flat nine, sharp nine, major third. There's a fifth, this is the odd one out, flat seven, flat nine. And then this whole thing is just a, an altered line, right? And the thing that sells it yet again is the resolution. It goes from A7 to F major and towards the end here I'm playing flat nine, flat seven, and then chromatically resolve to the third of F major right as I hit the downbeat. So work on those resolutions when you create your lines. They sell the whole thing. Lick number three. Okay, this is another one that I really have to study in order to present it to you. I'm gonna do my best here. It starts with an enclosure of a chord tone. We're playing this one over C major. I'm starting on the two, going to the four, and then resolving to the three. We call that an enclosure in jazz, where you target a chord tone from below and above. And then it goes into this Ingwe sequence. Uh, I'm pretty sure I stole it from Ingwe, but I'm playing it differently than him. I'm gonna to explain to you how that goes. Starting here on the 12th fret with your third finger. Go to the 10th fret on the B string, slide down a whole step, and then you continue this sequence. Yeah? In context. You want to do this throughout the entire scale. Don't just learn this lick as is. See this as a sequence and as an exercise that you can move along the entire string. Let me try that here. get more out of these licks. I want to be able to use them in different contexts, not just in one context. Um, so concluding this lick is another kind of bebopish line, if I may say so. Any jazz player who's watching this is going to kill me, but I'm going to call it that anyway. So the whole thing goes something like... I'm just reading it myself. Here's the downbeat. And a ton of chromaticism here. And our old friend, the resolution. Chord tone on a downbeat, in this case, the root of a D minor seven chord. Um, once again, the whole lick, a little faster maybe. Not sure I played it 100% exact, but you got the tap to refer to. Check that one out. That is lick number four. The last lick is taken from the little guitar conversation section that I'm having with Josh Smith there that was completely spontaneous and turned out awesome. Um, he fires up this idea where he slides around fifths. It's kind of a Petrucci idea, really. I was surprised that he had that one in his vocabulary. And being an old Petrucci fan, I, of course, had that one down. Its most prominent occurrence is in the Another Day solo. So luckily, I had that lick down and could play it in the key of D minor. So I'm going to play you the beginning of that, explain to you how that goes. You start on the seventh of D minor, which is a C on the B string. You slide up the whole step and then go a fifth up on the E string. Then you go back to the previous note and slide back down and go a fifth up. You can just practice that with these two little cells of fifths here. You slide between them. It's relatively simple to play. Of course, you can move this through different steps of the scale yet again, which is what I'm doing, because after a while, I'm sliding this one up a minor third. I can have endless hours of fun with this one. And once that is done, I think I actually slide down to the B flat on the B string, something like. And go into a whole step bend from the seventh to the root note. And then I go into this D minor pentatonic line that I totally have to read because I have no idea what I played. Let's see what happens here. Play that a little faster. That's something like that. The whole thing will go something like this. And you go back to the theme. 
And that concludes lick number five. that concludes today's lesson. Let me know in the comments what other solos you would like me to break down. I'm going to bring these to you every couple months, of course, completely for free. Check out the website for the tab. As always, don't forget to do all the YouTube stuff, such as liking, subscribing, commenting, etc. Um, don't forget there's a link in the description leading you to the free tablature that accompanies this lesson. There's a link to all my JTC products. There's a link to my Patreon campaign, my GoFundMe campaign etc etc thanks so much guys for checking this out we have a new martin miller session band video coming soon and i'll see you in the next video bye bye